welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about the Bella Beauté Bar Basic Witch Palette. This is the Halloween palette that I was looking forward to the most, so I thought it was only fitting to have it be my Halloween video this year. So I will be doing three looks with this palette, going over details, swatches, etc., talking about whether I think this palette is worth it or not. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet. And with that, let's just get started talking about this palette. All right, so first off, happy Halloween to all that celebrate. This was my Halloween palette of choice. I am not like a super big Halloween person. I'm going to be honest. I like how this was Halloween inspired, but not like a full on IP based off of a movie or anything like that. So here is what the palette looks like. Bella Beauté Bar is a new to me brand. I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for a palette that really spoke to me to buy. I did want the Smoky Glam palette, but that palette was just way, way too big for me. This is much more manageable. So this has 15 shades and it retails for $65. You have some duochromes, some multi-chromes, some hollow chromes as well, and I'm a sucker for purple. I love purple, and I just love the play on this palette with all of the wording and all that. I thought it was super cute. I did get some other Halloween palettes, but this one was like my Halloween palette, I think. So this is what I'm gonna be playing with today. Let's first just go through the swatches really quickly before I go over my looks with this palette. So going top to bottom, left to right, we have Perfectly Wicked, Glinda, Witch Please, Conjure, Grimoire, Hex, Black Magic, Hecate, Resting Witch Face, Incantation, Black Cat, Cauldron, Creep It Real, Hocus Pocus, and Coven. So I did already do two looks with this palette and I was gonna do the third one on camera with you while kind of just going over my thoughts on this palette. It's just faster if I kind of already pre-filmed the, the looks. It's not faster for me, but it doesn't make the video so long. So let's jump into the first two looks that I did with this palette and then we'll get into the third look and talk about my thoughts a little bit more. Straight into the very first look, I wanted to do something more green. So I took Creep It Real, the matte, and put that all over my lid up into my crease as kind of just a base shade. And I'm really just blending that up, kind of blowing it out a little bit more because I really want that green to show up. Afterwards, I took the shade Coven and used that as my deepening up outer corner shade. So I'm just kind of blending that up, adding some depth before I go in with those really special shimmers that I'm excited to put on. And I also took Coven on the lower lash line and blended that out with Hex, which is like a light lavender. I didn't wanna use the green because I didn't want the green to overtake my whole eye, which is why I kind of stuck with those purples. Now I'm using my NYX Glitter Glue because we're about to go in with the special shades. And I took the shade Hocus Pocus and I wanted to use a brush. Usually I use my fingers if you watch my videos before, but I did wanna see how it laid down. So I took Hocus Pocus on the entire lid. Then I went back with Coven and kind of just blended that all together, made sure I was happy with it. And then I took Cauldron to just try out as many shades as I could with this palette and placed it on the center. And that was the finished look. I did add liquid liner as well as false lashes in the style Sassy from Lily Lashes, and that was it. Jumping straight into look number two, I wanted this to be a little bit lighter, brighter, not so dark and grungy. So I took Grimoire and I put that all over the lid, kind of going for more of like an orangey pink sunsetty look. So Grimoire is going all over, and then I took Conjure to put that in the outer corner, not necessarily to darken it up, but almost to lighten it up and just add some more color to the look. And I'm also taking Conjure while I'm at it and just adding it to the lower lash line, nothing special. Then just prepping my eye with my NYX Glitter Glue as always. And the shade I took for the multi-chrome all over the lid was Incantation, the orangey one to kind of match that orange look. I'm actually putting that more on like the outer three-fourths of the lid because then I took Witch Please and this has like a very pretty pink to blue shift to it and I placed that on the inner 
quarter of the lid and kind of just went back and forth to blend those two shades. Now I'm just going in making sure you can kind of see the mattes and the multi-chromes are blended like I want. I did go in with Black Cat to just line my upper lash line, kind of thicken up the look of my lashes. I didn't want to make the liner too thick, just really add some fullness. And that is the finished final look, pretty quick and easy. So I knew that today I was going to want to play with the purples, which is why I didn't do a look with the purples going in. And I think that I kind of want to keep it just lighter and stick to kind of this quadrant here. I kind of also want to use this shimmer. I don't know if I want to use both shimmers because I haven't used this one and this one is a multi-chrome as well. I might use this shimmer as well as this one and just kind of get a third look out of there. Now, all of my looks, I didn't say this one going over, but I do prime my eyes with my NARS Soft Matte Concealer. So keep that in mind that I do kind of have like a sticky base and that can affect the mattes a little bit when blending and it can affect the formula. But I'm just gonna go in and kind of talk about this. I would love to know just your association with Halloween if you go all out for Halloween. I love like seeing other people excited for Halloween. I'm not necessarily someone who gets excited and loves to dress up but my favorite thing is to pass out candy. I think I love seeing the joy that others have for Halloween, but it's not necessarily something I like to go out for. I never really like loved dressing up. I still don't, I don't know, that's just me. But I do love seeing other people get really excited and go out of the box. I did grow up in the US, I live in France now, and Halloween is not that big of a deal here. It's becoming more and more like I actually saw some Halloween t-shirts and Halloween candy at the store. I couldn't believe it because 10 years ago, it definitely was not that way. But when I was a kid, at least, I did get to trick or treat because I lived in Arizona at the time. And that was always fun. Like, obviously, I'm not gonna say no to candy. I love candy, so. I was always excited for that as a child, but the actual dressing up part wasn't something that really I loved. I don't know. I, Halloween wasn't about dressing up. Halloween was about free candy. My mom used to make our costumes for us. She is really great at sewing. And she used to, I remember she'd stay up, this poor woman, she would stay up all night the night before sewing four costumes. And I used to think, growing up that she just procrastinated a lot but really like now that I've grown up I've realized that she was just a single mom of four kids and probably was just too busy to make the costumes at any other time and Halloween crept up on her and she probably realized like oh shit I need to do these costumes ASAP. So that's always a fun memory. My brothers I think our most favorite costume not mine but just in general all three of my brothers they went as Pokemon one year. So my mom made like full on head to toe Pokemon outfits for them. I think one was Mewtwo, one was Charmander. And I don't remember the third one, but that was really fun. I think whenever we look at Halloween photos, those are the, the photos we always look back at. But other than that, I don't know. I just never, I can't explain it. Why I'm just not a dress up person, I'm just, I'm just not. I'd much rather dress up for like something fancy. Like that's much more fun for me. But I'd love to hear like your traditions, what you do for Halloween, if anything. So please let me know. I wish I could pass out candy here, but like I said, first of all, I live in a village of 200 people. Like that is the population. And so no one's trick or treating to begin with. But even if I lived in a big city, like it's not really a thing here. That is one of the things I do miss about living in the US. Like Halloween is a fun time just for kids. I like seeing the joy on their faces and I love also eating candy, but I can do that on my own. So now that I have the mats down, I love how you can really get a versatile look with this palette. Like it looks very dark. I mean, it looks like color, I guess I could say that, but sometimes recently with all of these fall Halloween palettes because there have been a lot this year. They've just been leaning too dark for me. 
and that's kind of just put me off, I think, from buying some Halloween releases this year. I just put my NYX glitter glue on. It really does help the shimmers pop. Not just help with fallout, but that's also a plus. And everything that I'm wearing will be listed down in the description box below, any of the makeup I'm not talking about. So I am going to go with Resting Witch Face and Perfectly Wicked because then I think that, let me scan, I think that I've used all these shades except for Hecate. So that's actually pretty good. I thought I wasn't going to be able to use all the shades in this palette. Tap that on the outer half. These multi-chromes are just something else. You can see like how quick this look was. This took almost no time, which is my favorite. I do not really like spending a ton of time on my eyeshadow looks. I want them to look impactful and pretty, but I do not want to be spending just a ton of time blending out all these matte shades. These mattes are super, super blendable especially for an indie formula. If there's good mattes, like I know it's going to be a good palette, it's pretty easy common to find like a good special shade from an indie brand, but I find that not all indie brands have good mattes. And these mattes are super easy to blend out. They're beginner friendly. I am not someone who does crazy intricate looks. And so for me, I find these to just blend really easily, no fuss or anything like that. Um, just deciding what shade I wanna put on the lower lash line. I think, why don't we just use Hecate since that's the only shade in this palette I haven't used. Kinda of add that. Yeah, to, we'll just add the whole thing to the lower lash line. I don't typically like a darker lash line, lower lash line, but that's okay. These shades kind of come off lighter in the pan, the mattes do, and you can build them up. So that's why I don't mind putting them on the lower lash line because it doesn't look as dark as it does in the pan. You'd have to layer it up, which goes with just the ease of these mattes. And why I say that they're beginner friendly. I much prefer a buildable shadow than something that's a little bit like BAM pigment right away. I'm just going to take a fluffy blending brush and kind of blow it out so it's not a harsh line. There's no product on here. Try not to have a weird looking face while I do it, but that's impossible. Okay, I think I'll just line my upper lash line with Black Cat here, add mascara, and I'll be back to just wrap up and talk about my final thoughts on this palette. Here's the look with liner and mascara. So now let's just talk about my final thoughts, first impressions on this palette. Of course, this palette will be coming back in a palette ranking once I have a good collection, which I should soon because I am backed up on eyeshadow palettes. So you'll be seeing a lot of them on my channel, but you know, I'm really happy I picked this up. Like I said, this is my first time trying Bella Beauté Bar and I'm glad this is the first one. I saw quickly after this, they came out with the recently de-influenced. That's a cute palette too, very similar to this. I don't think I need both personally. I think the names are cute, but I'm, I'm glad I picked up this one over the recently de-influenced. If it was switched and de-influenced came out first, I might've picked that one up and then I would've been sad I didn't have this one. So I made the right choice with that. My biggest thing about this palette is the mattes are so nice. Like I was saying, you know, I can tell from an indie brand how I'm going to like them based off their mattes because I find that shimmers, multi-chromes are a little bit easier to do. These multi-chromes are beautiful. I would probably say, you know, I'm kind of a basic person, a basic witch, if you might say, like this is my favorite one out of the whole palette, but 
all of these are stunning. I was really happy with this shade, actually. This one surprised me the most on how much I liked it. So, you know, the multi-chromes, the special shades are solid, but the mattes are fantastic. I don't necessarily love really pigmented shadows. I much prefer something that is easy to blend and build, especially with a palette like this. A palette like this, how I'm going to utilize it is less so than I did in my looks and much more, you know, just two or three shadow look, a matte in the crease, a matte to deepen up the outer corner, and I'm going to let that special shade shine. The look that I did with the greens I use this one, I use this to deepen it up, and then I used this and I use cauldron like in the center you saw in look number one. I wish I didn't put cauldron on the center. I kind of felt like it was too much and it took away from the shiftiness of the shadow. So when you just use too much, it's too much. <laughs> I think that this palette works best with just really simple looks. Could you get an intricate look out of this, a very creative look? I'm sure you could. I am not the channel for that. I am much more of just like an everyday shadow person. And like I said, I would use this more as like a three shadow maximum look. So for my preferences, this works fantastic. If you're someone who's trying to dip their toes into indie, then I think this is a really great palette for you. Of course, you have to like color. This is much more colorful than other indie palettes that have mattes and special shades as well. I just find this also, you know, I've been trying to reach out. 2023 was like the year of indies for me. And I started off buying a lot of singles from indie brands. And I'm finding now that we're more towards the end of the year, I'm finding that I just prefer palettes like this. I just don't reach into my single shadows enough to justify the price point and it ends up being a little bit less expensive like $65 for a palette is still a lot but much less expensive than spending you know $15 $20 on a Cleona and while Cleona shadows are stunning and beautiful I did a, a swatch party with it I'll link that above and down below I do not regret my purchase whatsoever what I'm saying is is that I am more likely to reach into this palette if I want a multi-chrome over the Cleona shades, despite the Cleona shades being so much more impactful and better. So for me, the value comes more in a palette like this. I also recently did the review, the Glaminatrix Rich Romantic palette. Same thing. I'm much more likely to reach into a palette like that. I'll also have that video linked above and below. But I'm, I'm really happy with this purchase. I'm glad that I picked it up. I think that it's something to, just because it's not so Halloween-y, like it still has Halloween vibes, I'll reach for it all year round. And I like that. I, you know, sometimes a seasonal palette is nice, but I like the option of just knowing that I'll reach for it all the time, not just during a season and then it kind of gets forgotten. What I'm trying to say is I feel like I'll actually get my money's worth out of this palette and that's why I appreciate it. So let me know down below, is Bella Beauté Bar a brand that you've had your eye on? Do you already have palettes from them? I said this in my intro, but I really wanted that Smoky Glam palette. It was just so, so big. So let me know if you have that palette and if it's worth it because I would like to know. I'm trying to hold strong on my opinion about that because I'm afraid it's just gonna sit in my drawer even if I like the quality. But now that I've tried this and I like the formula so much, I'm I'm trying to hold strong. <laughs> so let me know if you have other palettes from them. I hope they stick with this 15 pan layout, not the 30 pans. And I'm excited to see what they come out with in the future because I'll absolutely just be keeping my eye out on them. I would say Lethal's probably my favorite matte formula out of indies that I've tried just off the top of my head and this rivals that. This rivals that. I would it's close. It's close. So that's all that I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed these looks, got some inspiration from this palette and that's where I'm going to leave you. Hope you're having a great one and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everyone.